Hey guys, and welcome to this episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia, and I'm coming to you from Germany. Today is Sunday, the 28th of May 2017. I'm so glad that you're joining me today to talk about some knitting and yarn. I have quite a few things to talk about today. So if you're watching for the very first time, I really hope that you'll enjoy this podcast. And if you're coming back, thank you ever so much. Um, first of all, I'll talk about the knit alongs that we have running at the moment. Then I'll talk about finished objects, works in progress, um, acquisitions and life in general. So let's just jump right in. So um, we have a Ravelry group called the Happy Knitting Podcast group on Ravelry. And in there, there's an introduction thread. There are um, threads um, for coupon codes and for your shameless self promotions. Um, and of course, um, the show notes. So if you have any questions about what I've been talking about, the easiest way is to check the show notes where I link all of the project pages and everything. And if you still can't find your answer there, then just um, comment in the thread. That, that'll be the easiest way. Um, and of course, we also have the knit-alongs running there. So at the moment, we have um, three knit-alongs. First, we have the One Ball with Love Cow, which is a knit-along, which is very informal, just to um, knit with some commercial sock yarn. I have kind of fallen off the wagon with this one, but I'm planning to get back on the horse with that pretty soon. Um, we also have the um, Keeping It Vanilla Cow, which is almost finished. That was a knit-along to knit some vanilla socks. So stockinette socks, and that ends on the 31st of May 2017. So do get your finished objects in if you have been participating and haven't gotten around to posting a photo in the FL thread, please do so now. I went through all the prizes last week and I will go through them again once I announce the winners, probably in next week's episode. Um, and you can find all the prizes in the chatter thread. All the information in general is always in the chatter thread. Um, and then also I started a new knit along for which I have not started a thread yet, but I should do that pretty soon. And that is the um, CYS curl, which is the celebrate your stash knit along. So for that, I just want to um, encourage you guys to knit from your stash. You know, find a yarn that has been in your stash for a long time because it's either been too special or you didn't know what to knit with it. Just kind of dig in your stash and I, at least I have a lot of really nice yarn in my stash, which I never really get around to looking at and working with. So I just decided to start a knit along based on that and let's just knit something from stash. I'm not going to be very, very strict about this one. Just knit whatever you want. Um, it will run until the end of July, I believe. All this is still very much up in the air, but I will start a thread and then we will start to, well, we'll work it out whenever. So that's all we're also running at the moment. And like I said, I will start a thread and then you guys can start posting. You can also use the hashtag CYSCow on Instagram. And yeah, I just want to have some fun. So that's all that's going to be. Um, so I think that's it for the knit alongs and let's just jump right into some finished objects. So um, I have two finished objects and I'm really excited because again, they're all socks. So first of all, I finished my, um, what I call my birthday socks because I cast these on on my birthday and they kind of do remind me of confetti, so it just made sense. So I knit these using a sock blank from Laughing Yafu, who is a UK based indie dyer. Um, this was on her, I think it's called Sock Tube, which is just her sock blank and the sock blank, in case you're interested, looked like this. And it's a, it's a merino nylon base. I don't have the tag with me. And this was called Sugar Hiccup, the colorway. So I just knit um, a pair of vanilla socks. Um, so I did a two by two rib and then a stockinette sock in style for our knit along. I did a garter stitch fish lips kiss heel. And yeah, so these are done. I'm super happy about these. I have blocked them because the yarn tends to be kind of crinkly when you knit from a sock blank. But yeah, I've really enjoyed knitting on these um, and I can't wait to wear them to be honest. It's a little bit too warm to wear them at the moment, but they will be worn very, very soon because they're super comfy and this yarn is just very, very soft. So I think these are going to be really great and yeah, I'm excited about them. I will say that um, with blocking, they are with soaking, these bled quite a lot. I was really surprised because it's a relatively light colorway, but I guess just with the speckling, the water turned very, very um, pink. <laughs> 
But with socks, I don't really care. That's why I hand wash most of the socks for the first, uh, just for the very first time, at least most of the time I do. And I, I definitely try to do the so with um, very saturated colors. And then after that, they are just going to go in the washing machine and they'll be fine. So that's my first finished object. And yes, I'm very excited about these. And then my second finished object, I finished on our holiday, which I'll talk more about later. And these are my Union Square socks and I just love these. I'm so excited about these. So as you can see, I did kind of like a mirrored sock. So the yarn that I used was um, donated by Maike of Das Regenbogenschaf. And this is her Epinta base, which is a wool, arami and silk blend. And she sent this to me to try it out and also donated a skein of this for our Keeping It Vanilla Cow. So I cast this on pretty soon after she sent this yarn to me and I love it. I talked about this base quite a few times so I don't want to keep repeating myself but let's just say I'm really really I really enjoyed knitting with this yarn and I'm very curious to see how they, these will wear. Um, in terms of um, the pattern this is the Union Square socks which is a part of um, Mina Phillips um, New York Sock Collection Sock Club. So this I think was her third installment of that club and my favorite um, pattern of all of, of out of all of the patterns that she released so far. I think this pattern is so fun and it looks really beautiful, but it was actually really, really easy to knit. It was very addictive and somehow this just really flew off my needles. Like this pattern was just really, really fun. And because it has sort of like a rib texture, I think it's also going to be really, really comfortable to wear. And, and this pattern would be really good for gift socks. So I put in um, Fishlips uh, Afterthought heels. I used the Kirby's, Kirby Werby's Afterthought heel, which I use all the time. And I really like how these heels came out. I was kind of considering not doing the opposite colors for the heels, but I'm really glad that I did because I think they look really, really fun. So I can't wait to wear these and I will actually wear and wash these a um, couple of times and then get back to you considering how this yarn will um, wear and tear because I'm really, really interested in this. I've never knit um, with um, such a sock base before. So I'm just very curious and I thought some of you might be as well. So these are my Union Square socks and yeah, I think that's it for finished objects. And once again, I feel like I'm speeding through this. I'm sorry if I am. Oh well. Let's move on to some works in progress. So first of all, first of all, let's get rid of all the stuff that's surrounding me. In this bag that my lovely sister Paulina made for me, I have my self-strapping socks. And I'm just realizing now that I didn't put them on a sock blocker but I finished my first sock. So you can see um, this is um, self-strapping yarn from Nicole C. Mendez. This is on her old base. This is a 75-25 merino nylon blend, which is more of a sort of rough base, but she has now started st um, dyeing on a newer base, which is much more soft. But I do really like this base. This is colorway number 202. I also believe that by now she actually um, has names for the colorways, but this is quite an old skein. And this is my second time knitting with Indie Dyed self strapping yarn and I absolutely loved it. So these will be gift socks um, because they just really remind me of someone. I did a one by one twisted rib and a stockinette sock and I put in a fish lips kiss heel. And I realized that it's sort of like the striping you have like a yellow, orange, yellow, orange going on here, but I really don't care. I think they're really fun. And yeah, I've been wanting to put in a afterthought here with self-strapping yarn for a while. So I just thought that was really fun. So I'm doing 64 stitches on a 2.25 millimeter US size one needle. And I have since cast on the second sock. I actually took this to the park with me just, just before I recorded because I just like having a vanilla sock on the go. I think I have like two or three more stripes before I need to put the heel in, but because it's an afterthought heel, I can just put it in whenever. So that's really, really good for taking socks with me. I like just knitting on a tube, especially when I'm out and about. It's the easiest way to not have to worry about heels and measuring and putting in the heel at the same at the right point because you can put in your afterthought heel whenever you want. And so, um, I think that's all there is to say about that one. I'd like to get these socks finished relatively soon but I'm really enjoying them. Um, 
my next work in progress. I did bring out my Cozy Memories blanket, but honestly, I just knit one square, so I'm going to keep, keep this brief. I just knit this one square, which is a potluck um, mini skein from Hedgehog Fibers, which I got from my lovely um, Dutch friend. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that one, to be honest. I just really wanted to knit with some of the Hedgehog minis that she sent me, so I put in one square, but then obviously we were away and I didn't take my blanket, so it's not really growing very much lately but I don't really care. So that's my Cozy Memories blanket. Um, next. In this bag I have my current favorite project which is the girl from the grocery store um, shawl by Hohi Locatelli. I finally caved and cast this on about two weeks ago I believe when I was sick. And I love it. So this is where I am at the moment. I am still in the sort of stripey section. So this um, Panda Progress Keeper is where I was last week. So you can see I've made quite a bit of progress even and especially considering that these rows are starting to get longer. And yeah, I'm really enjoying this knit still. It's a lot of garter stitch, but it's been very therapeutic. And I really like the yarns that I'm working with, which helps. So the yarns that I'm using are um, this one, which is Hedgehog Fibers um, Skinny Singles in the Villain colorway. There you go. And the white one, which is kind of falling apart because I'm doing a center pull ball. This is from Fine Fish Yarns, who is another UK based dyer. This is the second time I'm knitting with her yarn. This is her core sock base in the Whatever Happened to Fairy Cakes colorway. So I'm really, really enjoying this. It's kind of out of my color comfort zone, but I just think it's really pretty and I can't wait to see how the finished shawl is going to look. Also, I don't very often knit with like super light yarns and I think this is going to be very sort of summery and cheerful and I really, I really like working with these colors. So yeah, that's my, um, the girl from the grocery store shawl. Um, I'm using four millimeter needles. You're supposed to do 4.5, but I just don't really like knitting with large needles. I talked about this before, so I went down to 4.5, uh, to 4 millimeter US size 6, and I'm really happy with that. Next up, I have my excuse me shawl, but honestly, there's not that much progress to show you, so I'm just going to give you a little peek. Yeah, there's really not much to show you in terms of progress. But this is the excuse me shawl by Stephen West. It's a two color brioche shawl and this is the front and this is the back. And I'm not really sure why I'm showing this to you because like I said, there's not much progress at all. The yarns that I'm using, this one is a woolen vine in her um, Pandora colorway on her MCN base, which is called Volker. And this one is Das Mondschaf, who is a German indie dyer on her um, Pegasus base which is a merino nylon base in the Rapture colorway. This one I'm knitting on 3.5 millimeter needles and yeah, I need a lighter cord so you can kind of see what's going on. To be honest, I should probably switch up the needles at some point. But yeah, I'll just talk about this more whenever I have some more progress on this. I'm kind of in shawl nirvana with this one because the rows are very long and with brioche you have to do every row twice which is not a big problem, but it kind of makes it harder for me to just pick it up and knit a couple of stitches because I like to at least finish one entire row, which means to knit one row with two yarns and that just takes a while. But anyways, um, my last work in progress is a new cast on and I'm really excited about this one. I have a feeling I might cast on something else today because it just feels like a cast on kind of day, but I cast on some more vanilla socks because vanilla socks are the best socks. Um, and I cast on with this yarn. This is a new to me yarn, which is from Herbstblatt Regina, who is in Germany. I assume that most of you have heard from her before, but I actually never managed to catch an update or somehow I just never, I never worked it out. But then I did join um, her um, Western sock club in the beginning of the year. And this was the third shipment. It's um, called Bambi and Trinity. It's her 8020 Merino Superwash Polyamide base, which is called Hazel Soft Sock. 
And this was my favorite out of the three skeins that she sent me. I just thought the colorway was really, really stunning and really interesting, just with the sort of pink and blush and brown colors. It just looked really fun. So I decided to cast on another vanilla sock. And this is where I am with it. So I am. Um, I did um, 20 rows of 2x2 two two rib, I did 90 rows of stockinette because I decided that these are going to be for me and I want to have some really long sort of cozy house socks. Or oh, they don't have to be house socks but I just really like long socks and I kind of, now that I've done these and I'm doing them very long, I'm kind of tempted to do all three of the western sock club skeins, have sort of like my western collection. I just think that would be really fun. But anyways, I put in a garter stitch fish lips kiss heel once again because I really like that. And because the yarn is really squishy, these heels just turn out really nicely. So now I'm about halfway down a foot and I'm really enjoying this. I'm knitting it on my favorite needles ever, which are the Chagu Red Lace 2.25 millimeter US 1. So that's it for my works in progress and I'll be right back with my acquisitions. So, for acquisitions this week, I was totally and utterly blown away by a lovely package that arrived. And, oh my gosh, I couldn't even believe it. I was actually expecting a different package um, of sock yarn for Kai, which he had ordered because he wants, he desperately wants more socks. And so I came home and this package was sitting there and I was like, hang on, what, what is that? And I was really confused for a second and anyways, um, I had had a bit of a tough day at work as well and we were just about to go away and this just brightened up my day so much. Like you, I, 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 can't, I, don't have, I don't even have words for it, seriously. So a lovely viewer of the podcast who I don't know if she wants to be named, she got in touch and said that she would like to send me um, a related birthday present, which is just the nicest thing ever and I would never expect people to do that, but that was just lovely. And so she sent me a beautiful card, which is so cute. And she's based in, out of Texas, so, oh my gosh. First of all, she sent me this amazing tote, which is just ridiculously fun. And this is also the perfect, like, yarn buying size. Like, if you're going to a yarn festival, wouldn't this be amazing? I absolutely, I, I just love this to death. This is awesome. Then, um, she also sent me, I love Texas, uh, stitch markers, which are hilarious. She sent me two of these. Let's see if that'll focus. Yeah, you get the idea. How awesome is that? I've never seen anything like that before and that just made me smile so much. So that's really awesome. I got two of these. And then you guys, first of all, everything was beautifully wrapped and the yarn that she sent me was wrapped in mini skeins. So she sent me um, these three mini skeins wrapped around um, the package essentially. And these are just so, so fun. I, I love these colors and they're very springy and these will go straight into my blanket or both blankets maybe because they, they look like pretty big minis. So that was just genius and so fun already to unpack. Next, she sent me two pretty large mini skeins from a yarn dyer that I haven't heard from before. It's um, Twisted Owl Fiber Studio out of Texas. Um, and these are 8020 Merino Nylon two ply sock yarn, 25 mini gra grams um, skeins. And she sent me these two, which are awesome. So I'll just give you a close up so you can see. It's got a beautiful ply and they look, they look really, really pretty. So here's their logo. And what I love is, this one is called Strawberry and this one is called Gropo because it's like, obviously it's like a mix between pink, uh, gray and purple. So I just thought that was hilarious. So again, these are awesome. I'm not sure if I'm going to use them for heels and toes for some socks or maybe into the blanket or maybe both. But I love these. And then she just went totally overboard and spoiled me to death. Seriously, you guys. Kai, kind of, Kai was home and I unpacked this package and he was like, what the hell is going on now? Because I just kind of freaked out. So I will send mustache yarns. And this is the sort of yarn that I see on podcasts in the US and I'm super jealous, but I don't really order yarn from the US for um, custom reasons mostly. And uh, so these sort of yarns, I never expect that I would ever, you know, have any of that in my stash. So to get some mustache yarns, just because a viewer is super lovely, just totally, totally blew me away. 
So this is a, a Mustache Yarns um, Perfect Sock Self Striping in the Woodstock colorway, 20 even stripes. And they're, they're two, two perfectly matched half skeins, twisted together in her 7525 Merino Nylon blend. So this is just insane. I unpacked this first and I couldn't believe it. Look at, you can kind of get the colorway picture on here and it's 20 stripes, which is just crazy to think that someone di actually dyed this and the amount of work that must go into this. This, yeah, I don't have word for, words for this. And she thought that I might not like these colors, but that's crazy. I love these colors. I think they're awesome. And uh, I kind of want to knit with it, but then I kind of want to have it in my stash forever. And the light is coming in, I kind of weird, sorry about that. So that just totally blew me away. Like, oh my gosh. And then I unpacked the one package that was still left over and she sent not one, she sent two skeins of mustache yarns. And this has got to be my favorite and I think she knew this. Uh, this is also a mustache yarns self striping in the apple picking colorway, which is seven uneven stripes. Also sort of like two matching 50 gram skeins. And this colorway is just so me and I, I just love it so much. This is crazy. So to get this in the mail, this seriously had me crying. And every time I get a lovely package from a viewer, I, I feel like I've never gotten such an amazing package. And that's exactly how I feel with this. This is just crazy. Like you guys are so generous to me. I did not expect to be showered with yarns and stitch markers and a project bag. And yeah, I can't even as the grocery girls would say. I, I I have no words for this. So I kind of want to cast one of these on and then at the same time I kind of don't want to cast these on because they feel really speci special to me. So I haven't decided yet, um, but I, I, I'm ridiculously grateful for this. Thank you so much. You know who you are. This just so, oh my gosh, this just brightened my day and it was really hard being away and to know that these yarns are lying around my desk and waiting to be knit up and yeah, this just makes me so happy even just now looking at them again. I love these yarns and I feel incredibly spoiled. Like, I don't do this podcast to get lovely gifts, but when I do, it just kind of blows me away and the ger generosity of some knitters or most of the knitters actually is, is, is just, it, it keeps blowing me away. So thank you so much. and. I feel very, very lucky. Um, so that's it for the package that I received, which was, by the way, a huge package. Um, also, I picked up a couple of things when we were away. So I actually intentionally did not look up any yarn stores because I kind of figured it's the CYS Cal and I don't need to be buying more yarn because I have quite a lot of yarn that I actually want to work with. But, um, well, First of all, we went to a bookstore and I found a sock pattern book and I don't actually have, I think I have like one or two knitting books, if even that, but I found this one and this is a hundred sock patterns and it's by a uh, made by Regia, which I thought, I just thought was interesting. The price point and this was very, very good as well. So I, I don't think this is um, published in English. I think it's just a German book. Does it say? It doesn't say anything, but it's just a hundred um, simple sock patterns and I just thought for the price that uh, I do want to knit a few more um, pattern socks and I especially want to knit some um, color work socks. So I just thought this would be a really, really good resource to have. And there's a lot of patterns in here that I don't think I'll ever knit, but there's quite a few that I do like. And I just thought I'd show you some of them. Um, first of all, there and um, one that I noticed was um, this one, which is just a really pretty cabled sock. I don't really knit very many cable socks, but I just thought that this one would be a nice one to knit. I also, um, this is definitely my favorite pattern. This is the one that sold me to buy this book. This is just a really fun sort of slip stitch pattern. And I think the socks look awesome. They have a sort of rolled hem at the top. And I just think these look so fun. I definitely want to knit these pretty soon. I just, yeah, I, I love the effect that you get with this. I think they're really awesome. I really like the colors that, that, that they're knit out of, out of as well. And yeah, this, this totally sold me. I also, um, my second favorite pattern in here is this one. So I haven't really knit many color work socks, but I would really like to get into that at some point. And these ones, I just really, really like, again, I really like the colors as well. 
but I just think it's a really fun sort of all over color work sock. But I will say, um, with this book, the photography type um, of some of these patterns, you can't see them at all because they're knit in a super dark yarn. So I'm not lying to you when I say that. These 15 patterns in here, I have no idea what they look like because they're knit in a dark yarn, they're photographed just once from afar, and you have no idea what the pattern is actually going to look like. And the same thing goes for this chart for this pattern. Like, who prints a chart like that? You can't see anything. So I have no idea. I probably have to photocopy it and then maybe use like a, a black pencil to kind of color in some of the colors because the way that it's written down here, and I don't think I'm giving anything away, makes it impossible to read. So yeah, there's some things about this book that I like, but and some of them I really don't like. I will be honest about that. Another fun um, pair is um, this one. I'm not sure how well you can see, but again, it's a color work sock, but this one only has color work at the top and the bottom which I think would be really, really good for me to start because it's just once you get past that initial stage here, you have just some stockinette socks. And again, I think the effect is really, really cool. I really like these. They have a lot of traditional sort of German Bavarian sock patterns and these ones are sort of all over cabled and I think, sorry about the lighting here. Again, I wouldn't probably knit them that long and Kai would never wear them, but I think the patterning is really awesome. So. I might knit something like that at some point. So yeah, I just decided to pick this up and it's always good to have a couple of sock books on the shelf. Uh, and yeah, like I said, I think this cost me as much as two or three patterns on Ravelry would have. So I think it's a pretty good resource. There's also um, explanations on different heel techniques and just a general sock knitting course in here as well. And because um, this book is based by Regia, it's basically, you can knit it with any kind of sock yarn, so I think, yeah, I'm really happy about this. The only other thing that I picked up is um, one ball of yarn. I, like I said, I wasn't looking for a yarn store, but I walked straight into one. And I was like, oh, now I have to go in. And they had um, this yarn. This is Ferner Wolle. I've knit out of their um, hand-dyed range before, and the light is coming in crazy. And um, actually, one of my viewers has um, talked to me about this yarn. And I've been really wanting to try it, but it, this is an Austrian yarn and I have found it quite hard to get a hold of here. So this is their um, Lungauer Sockenwolle Vierfach. Um, yeah, like I said, I just really wanted to try it because I do like their hand dyed range, so I do like their base. And I just decided to grab a, uh, to grab a ball. They had a couple of different colorways and this one is the one that, I re that really spoke to me. It's colorway number 003.17 and I have no idea how it's going to knit up because there wasn't like a picture or anything on it but I just think this is going to be fun and I've also been slacking off on my one ball with love cows so this might be a good opportunity to get back into that. So I'm not sure if I'm going to knit these for me or maybe as a gift, we'll see. But I just thought I'd pick that up. So that's it for my acquisitions. Um, and I think general, in general, that's it for my yarny content of this show. So if you're only here for that, that's fine. I will just see you again next week. And if you're sticking around to talk, to listen to me ramble about random life stuff, you're welcome to do so. Um, basically what's happened is um, I am, we had a long weekend. Thursday was a public holiday here in Germany and I actually took Friday off work which in itself was quite difficult because there's just a lot of stuff going on at work to be honest and yeah anyways um we did go away on wednesday night after work and we drove down to lake chiemsee which is a lake in the south of germany it's about one or one and a half hours away from where we live and um my grandparents have a tiny beautiful apartment near the lake where you can actually kind of look over the lake onto the Alps. It's really, really beautiful. And I think they bought it when my mom was still a child. And I kind of, I, I, I can't say I grew up there, but I spent a lot of time in my childhood at that place. Like we would go there at least every once a year, sometimes even two or three times a year. And especially because I had younger siblings, you know, we spent some of the summers there because they were kind of too small to go on bigger trips. So I just have, a crazy amount of memories um, with this place and with Kai um, we've only been there well we've only really um, been there for, for holiday once 
We also visited last year when my parents were there because it's quite close to Munich. But yeah, so this was only our second holiday there together and it was just so lovely. It was really, really beautiful. We were lucky with the weather as well because it's been super summery here. Um, and we essentially, we just hung out and we had lots of really, really yummy um, Bavarian food, which is the best food ever. If you haven't, if, if you haven't eaten German food before, it's, it tends to be very sort of heavy and salty and I, I, I am a sucker for that sort of really traditional German food. Um, we took a couple of walks along the lake, we visited two different towns, we visited Traunstein and Wasserburg, which was really, really beautiful. And we kind of wanted to hike, but then we were too lazy and then we just never managed, but it doesn't matter because we can basically go whenever we want, so it's not a big deal to me. We just hung out a lot and, and there was a balcony where you can just kind of hang out and look over the lake and I did some knitting and it was, it was just all around lovely. It was so fun and I really needed some time away as well, I think. And it was just so good to spend some time together as well because it kind of, we kind of can tend to get carried away with work and work and work and there's nothing else. So yeah, it was just really great to go away. We actually left quite early today because we wanted to have some time back at home as well to just get, get back into things. We actually spent some time at the park today because we live really close to the River Isa, so we can just, I like to really just take a blanket and take some coffee from home and just hang out, which was again lovely. And I, I just enjoy being outside and it's been a really good getaway. I'm also excited because next week is again a long weekend for Pentecost, so it feels like there's a lot of holidays at the moment, which is a good thing because I like to make most of the weekends and we are so lucky that we have this place and also Kai's parents place where we can just kind of escape and it's all quite close to where we live now so that's a huge bonus. So yeah that was really really good. I wish I had gotten more knitting done but even at on holidays the day only has 24 hours and I took like a huge, I have this one bag but I always take with me for um, holidays where I just put a couple of skeins of yarns in but as you could you could see I only cast on one thing because I always kind of think that I'll have three weeks of knitting time when in reality it's like four days. But yeah, it was really, really good and yeah, I'm already looking at, looking forward to next weekend. We're probably going to go away again. And yeah, I think that's pretty much all I have to talk about. So um, if I'm a good podcaster, which I'm not quite sure yet, but I'll try to put in a couple of photos at the end. You know, I am terrible at vlogging or anything like that. I will never be a vlogger. I like watching other people's pod uh, vlogs, but I just, I'm just unable. So this time I did actually not take, I didn't take a minute of video either. I'll just put, put in a couple of photos. And if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen most of them as well. My Instagram is um, the Happy Knitting Podcast, by the way. And on Ravelry, you can find me as Wipfi, which is W-U-E-P-F-I. So with that, I think I'll end today's podcast. Um, once again, I don't really know when I'll see you next, but it will be roughly in a week, maybe next week, Monday, because that's when we'll be getting back most likely, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. If you subscribe to this channel, you'll just get a notification whenever the new video is there anyways. So until I see you again, happy knitting. Don't forget to put in your finished objects for the Keeping It Vanilla Cow. I will announce the winners on the next podcast episode. Until then, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful Sunday and happy knitting. Bye.